Welcome to the VB Toolbox. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about dynamic arrays. Dynamic arrays allow us to restructure or redim our arrays after they've already been created. Uh, sometimes we don't know how many records we want to store in our array, so uh, this gives us the ability to alter the array size at runtime. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to create a new project and that will be a Windows Forms application and I'll just call it dy eh, dynamic arrays, simple enough and hit OK and that'll generate a project template for us um, first thing I will do is add a few form controls to my form so I'm gonna start with a button and uh, let's see on the text caption. I'm just going to leave the names as they are, but I'm going to change the captions on them. So I'm going to say array gen. This is what we'll generate our array with. Um, and I'm going to want a couple others here. I'm going to copy that and paste it. And I'm going to call this one array plus 10. Because we're going to restructure our array and I want a label and I'm just gonna set the text on that to zero and with that we're gonna track the uh, count of records in our array <clears throat> and finally I'm gonna add a list box just to show our output I am gonna change the name of that just to make it a little shorter I'm just gonna call it LB int Okay, and with that, we will go ahead and double click on our Array Gen button to generate a click event. And uh, I'm going to start here by adding um, an array. I'm going to make it public. You can make it public, private, uh, it just depends on how you want to access it. I'm just going to do a public DYN array with no. Um, dimension parameter here so it's I'm not going to tell it how big the array is I'm just going to leave it open and I'm just going to make this an integer since integers are easily to uh, generate random values with and with that I'm going to um, create a randomizer here I'm going to do public rnd as new random that'll generate random numbers for us to populate our array and uh, let's see, speaking of populating the array, I'm going to go ahead and create a sub to do that. So I'm going to just drop down here. And uh, with this, I'm going to do a private sub populate array. No parameters. And I'm going to start out with an array of just uh, 10 items. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, cycle through this. Actually, I'll come up here into my button. This is where we'll actually redefine our array size. Since we haven't specified any dimension size, I'm going to say redim. And that restructures our array. And um, I'm going to say dynamic array, dyn array 9. Okay, so that gives it a, a static size here of 10 values that it can store. Now, when I do this without the preserve feature, um, it will actually wipe out the array, the existing information that exists in the array. In this case, there's nothing in there, it's just uh, 10 empty values. Um, but you, you need to remember if you want to preserve the contents of your array you need to use the preserve feature option so uh, I'll get to that in a moment now we need to actually populate this with some values so I'm going to drop back down into our populate array sub and I'm just going to loop through uh, the values that exist in here I'm going to say for i equals 0 to uh, dynamic array 
dot count and I need to use a minus one uh, because it's a zero based array that's why nine is actually ten because zero counts as a value and here I will say dine array and I'll specify the um, index position here using I and then I'll give a, I'll set a value for that index so I'm just gonna say rnd dot next and I'm gonna just uh, populate it with values from 1 to 100 so I'm gonna say 1 to 101 and the reason I'm using 101 here is because the randomizer uh, always drops off the last value so this is actually 1 to 100 and after I populate it I'm going to change uh, my label count my counter label here to reflect the new size of the array so I'm going to say label one dot text equals dynamic array dot count and that'll show us the total number of records in that array and uh, then if there's any Thing in here uh, in this list box I want to just clear that out uh, so we get a we know that what we're seeing in there is actually coming from the array and not what's already been preserved in that so I'm just gonna say LB int dot items dot clear and then I'm going to repopulate the uh, um, list box from whatever values exist in our array and for this I'm just going to use a small lambda expression. I'm going to do array dot for each and uh, the array that I want to uh, cycle through here is dine array. And you could do this with a for each expression or for uh, i equals zero to whatever. And for the action, I'm just going to say new action of integer, because that's the value that we're storing. And then I'm going to create a nameless sub here. Sub x, x being each uh, value in our array. And I'm going to say um, list box int dot items dot add x okay and close off those uh, parentheses so we're looping through our array and we're firing an app action for each record that it finds in our array and we're going to take that value whatever value is found and we're going to add it to our list box that's what that's doing it just kind of condenses that uh, you know, instead of looping through it like this, condenses it down to one line. Those are kind of fun to learn. And now that we have this uh, populate array ready, we can go ahead and add it to our button click up here. So I'll just say populate array. Now we should be able to run this and uh, populate our array from the button. And there you go. So we've generated a list of random numbers. It's redimmed. We restructured our dynamic array. Uh, previously, it had no, um, you know, indexes specified. So you can just keep clicking that, and it'll generate an entire new list because we're not using the preserve feature. So what if we want to preserve the contents and actually, uh, you know? dynamically increase the size of our dynamic array. Well, that's what we will do next. So we will jump back to our form and double click on this button to create another um, event. And again, we we'll use redim. And instead of destroying the contents of the array, we want to keep whatever was in there before. So I'm going to say redim preserve dynamic array and uh, to do this dynamically <laughs> we're going to use the existing count of records that exist in there so I'm gonna say uh, dynamic array dot count plus another nine 
So that'll actually give us another 10 records. And then we'll populate the array again. Let's go ahead and run that. So if we run this guy, notice we've got 10 records. No matter how many times we click it, it wipes out the contents and regenerates a new array. So now we're going to try adding 10 new records to that array. Look at that. And if I hit this again, it uh, truncates the array back down to exactly 10. And I can begin adding more. If I keep adding, I can just keep, you know, adding more and more records to that array. So now it's really big. So um, the same is um, true for making multi-dimensional arrays. And one major limitation of dynamic arrays is that once you've specified, um, you know, once you've redimmed and actually specified a dimension here and uh, added a value to that, you can't re-dimension the array uh, to an array of different dimensions. So uh, to clarify, if I've um, gone ahead and hit this button, you know, this is a single dimension array. So once I've redimmed that, once I've um, specified a dimension here, I can no longer convert that. I can't go and redim this same variable to a two dimensional array. Okay? Uh, so now we have an XY coordinate and it does not like that. So you can't uh, change the dimensions in the array. Another limitation is um, when you do create a multi dimensional dynamic array, say public um, XY array, and we'll just throw a comma in there. Uh, another limitation of the redim is that you can't, um, if you use the preserve, it will only preserve the, the records of the last dimension. So, um, you know, if we set this to 9 and 9, oops, it's no longer dynamic, but. Um, we can we can redim and preserve the contents of this last dimension, but not the dimensions before it. So that's another limitation. Um, but we'll go ahead and just do a quick keep this dynamic here, and we can jump back to our form and add another button if you want. Right click and copy. Right click and paste. Y. Oops. All right. Now, using this dynamic array, um, I'm going to show you something that a feature that we lose. So we'll just redimension this. I'll say redim x y array, and I'll make that a 10 by 10 x y grid. It's two dimensions now. And what you're going to see is that XY array no longer has a count. Um, so you have to keep track of, of these. So you might uh, populate a couple of integer variables with your dynamic array structure. That way, if you're looping through them, uh, you know how high to set your loop values. So. Um, we'll just go ahead and say for x being the x coordinate or the x dimension and y being the y dimension, I'm going to say for x equals 0 to 9 um, since we've set a static value here. And in, we'll nest a loop uh, to loop through the values of the second dimension. So I'll say for y equals 0 to 9. And here, we'll say x, y array on the x index and the y index set a value. 
do another random number, random next, 1 to 100, and just to test our output I'll pick a, a random, um, random index from our two-dimensional array, I'll say message box um, 3, 7, help if I actually uh, specified my array. There we go. Message box x, y, array, 3, 7. So it's going to go to this index and this index, the fourth and the eighth index in the uh, array. I'm just going to punch the... Check those, check those, and we'll test our uh, two-dimensional array. So there you go. Now again, because we're... Uh, not preserving the contents here. Every time I click the button it redims it and it re rebuilds our dynamic array and uh, erases the contents. So that is uh, dynamic arrays in a nutshell. I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for joining me and if you think anybody will find this uh, helpful uh, please share it. Have a good one. Bye.